Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. Today I want to take a look at these cheap multimeters and talk about some of the issues I've had now that I've had them for a couple years at least. Each one of them have developed a problem and we'll look at each meter and see what that problem is and why it might be a good idea to spend a little more on a meter. Now certainly if I were a professional I would look up market for meters such as a fluke you know, I'm earning a living, I really need tools that I can depend on. But being a weekend warrior, I don't need to spend a lot on a meter. Though I still might look a little more up market for a meter after seeing some of the issues I've had with these cheap meters. So now I'll go through each of these meters and take a look at the problems I've had with them. First meter is the Anning or an egg, or however you pronounce it, eggnog, <laughs> whatever, AN8009. There's also an 8008 version, which is very similar, but instead of having the non-contact voltage detection, it has like a square wave output simple function generator in this mode here. This is my favorite meter. It's really small, very readable display you know, at this angle I'm filming you can see how the numbers are easy to read and if I bring my radio shack in here see it's you know it's a little darker and the bezel here kind of blocks part of the display you have to tilt this way up see how the lower end of the zero is cut off here but you can see it clearly here really like the display and it has a nice backlight too. This one does not have a backlight. So it has a nice bright backlight you can see. So yeah, I do like this meter. It's reasonably accurate. But here are some of the issues I've had with it. Mine came with two sets of probe leads. One set of the leads have these probe tips that you can unscrew. So you can put different probe tips on it. But I started to get really screwy resistance measurements with it. So I ditched those and I'm just using the other set now, which so far have been pretty good. Now there's one recommended hack I did to this meter. There's a lot of noise that gets on the supply rails of this meter due to its digital circuitry, which as I recall makes some of the readings slower to lock in. So what I did is soldered a ceramic capacitor across the supply rails. And when I checked it with the scope, it did significantly reduce that noise across the supply rails. To be honest, I didn't really notice a difference. I didn't actually perform a before and after test, but it was a recommended hack, so I went ahead and did it. One issue I've had with this meter, I set it to ohms here. And I'll just short the leads together getting inconsistent measurements. One time I was getting 40 ohms. Right now it's not so bad, but I found if I kind of jiggle the control a little bit, you know, see how the numbers change. That's really low. I just think the selector switch here is just not that good. I mean, this meter doesn't have a lot of use and it's already getting crusty. So that's one thing to look out for. A few days ago, I was visiting a friend up in Michigan. He has the 8008 version, and he has the same issue. So out of two samples, you know, we're seeing that issue. So it might be a common problem. Not really a big, you know, set to sample from, but you know, they're, they're not probably not going to use the best metallurgy in these meters for the contacts, switches, and things. So, yeah, that's one issue I'm having with that meter. Next up is my Radio Shack TRMS, or True RMS, 42 range digital multimeter. I like this meter as well, but it has come down with a strange problem and let me show you what that is okay so I've hooked up the meter 
to this FeelTech high quality function generator. And let me set it to the volt scale. And set it to AC to measure an AC voltage. So as you can see here, it's flashing zeros and then the reading. The reading is accurate, but for some reason now it started flashing the reading and then flashing zeros back and forth. See the decimal point moving? It's like it's trying to auto range or something. Something went funky with the uh, auto ranging. I wonder if I lock that in, will it uh, retain the measurement? Let me see here. No, it's just acting bizarre. Yeah, it's just bizarre. So it seems to have a problem with the auto ranging voltage, and it also does that with the current measurement as well. Let me set it for AC and see that it's jumping back and forth. I wonder if it does that with the uh, frequency measurement. No? It's set up for 200 Hertz and I'm getting a pretty close measurement. So it's just the AC voltage and current. So why it's having that problem with auto ranging, I'm not sure. I thought maybe it was a battery issue, so I put new batteries in there, and well, it still does it. You know, I've had this thing for, I don't know, probably four years now, and this started last year. So unfortunately, it does limit its use. I mean, I can still get readings from it, but it's kind of annoying when you're trying to get a measurement. Next up is the UNI-T UT210D. Say that a bunch of times fast. <laughs> well, uh, hey, Snicker says, I'm not going to say that a bunch of times fast. I just want to get in your face. What? Okay, Snickers, what do you want? This was completely sudden, unplanned cat bombing cat video bombing of my video. Okay, I'll try to do this with the cat walking all over me here. Well, I would really recommend having one of these meters. It's nice to be able to measure uh, <laughs> measure AC and DC voltages without you know having to uh, tap into the circuit. You can just put the wire through here and take your measurements. Really useful. Electronically I haven't had any issues with this meter but you can see the silk screening of the Snickers. <laughs> He's bumping the camera. It's gonna walk back and forth the whole time guaranteed. You can anyway you can see the uh, the lettering is rubbing off. Come on now, you can do a little better than that. And these meters, I don't even use this one that much. And the letters are rubbing off. It's kind of annoying. Other than that, it's a pretty good meter. I kind of wish they had straight leads. You know, why make the streamline meter and have these 90 degree leads that come out? It just gets in the way. I'd rather have straight leads that would come straight out of this meter here and be a lot more useful I think. I, maybe I'll have to try and find some leads but other than that I haven't really had any issues with this meter. So I guess the old saying is you get what you pay for. Well I do think these meters coming in at under thirty dollars or so are still a pretty good bargain but yeah they're not necessarily going to be that reliable so I might look up market for a little better meter, maybe something in the $100 range. Something that's going to be more reliable. It would be cool to have EEV Blog's new 121 GW, I think it's called. That's a really neat meter. It would be cool to have a Fluke or, you know, one of the nicer meters out there. But some of those meters, you know, you get into the two, $300 range. Just a little bit more than I want to spend on a meter, so... 
Perhaps I'll find something in the hundred dollar range. Right, Snickers? There we go. Well, that'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching.